I am operating on four hours of sleep. That's all I've gotten since uh, CrowdStrike Falcon Apocalypse has happened. And I, I wanted to record some video, one to kind of get like the, the dump of what happened for me and to kind of share that story because it was, guys, it was, it was, a, it was a hell of a night. And um, also to, you know, to just, I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's, let's get to it. Hey there, home lovers, self hosters, IT pros and engineers, Rich here, a very tired Rich. Yesterday was the craziest day I think I've seen in the IT world as a professional of like uh, 25 years. And it all has to do with CrowdStrike Falcon and how it uh, essentially took down, well, the company that I work for, it took down, it essentially took it completely offline, as well as, you know, countless other companies around the world. So if you don't know who CrowdStrike is, uh, well, CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity company, uh, one of the biggest in the world, I would say, and they have a lot of products, but specifically the one that uh, uh, affected everybody is CrowdStrike Falcon, which is a, their endpoint detection and response software, also known as an EDR. And EDR is the successor to antivirus. I'm oversimplifying here, right? But antivirus was all about like doing a detection on a signature, like, oh, this file, like we've seen this file before and we know it's bad, so let's get rid of that file. EDRs are intelligent. They look at the behavior of something, the way it's working, and then they stop it if they think it's suspicious using machine learning and a whole bunch of other black magic that it's really not important. But CrowdStrike Falcon is the, in my opinion, the best EDR on the market. Like it's the 800 pound gorilla of endpoint detection and response. Uh, there are other companies out there that do a good job, but Falcon is the best. And that's why it's used by so many companies and governments around the world, including the one that I work for. So, so what happened? The TLDR is that uh, CrowdStrike pushed an update of a file that was literally only like, I think it was like 30 kilobytes in size. And uh, as part of their regular updates that they do for the Falcon clients. And that went out to the world and it went out, it started to, it landed in my company around nine-ish PM last night, Pacific time. And it caused rolling uh, blue screens of death. So that meant that the computer would be sawed. These are all Windows machines, by the way. So the Linux, they have Linux and they have Mac Falcon clients, but they were not affected. So it would be sod, then Windows would do its mem dump, and then it would restart, and then it would be sod almost immediately after mem dump, and you get to the point. So, needless to say, it was, you know, essentially crashing all of these systems all over the world, all at the same time. You guys remember the the movie Lawnmower Man? Like, when the, the dude who's gonna become the Lawnmower Man, whatever, um, he's like, you guys will know my birth cry by the ringing of the phones around the world. Well, it's like, this was kind of like that where everywhere around the world at the same time, this birth cry of like disaster was going on. It was, it was pretty incredible. So the only way to fix this problem, and there was, there was like information coming out from CrowdStrike slowly at first, but then they started to get more regular with it, was to, if you can, shut down the computer, if you have hands on it, launch into safe mode, delete the file in question, and then start the machine back up and it'll just boot normally and it'll download the fix that they have put out there. It just was essentially a rollback of the previous version of that file. Uh, the problem is, is that you had to do this by hand, right? So um, all these companies, including mine with like 400, 500 VMs spread across the world, you had to touch them by hand. I'll talk about that stuff in a bit though. I wanna tell you about the discovery part of it. So let's, let's do story time here. It is roughly, 9.30, 9.40 at night last night, and my company email is just blowing up. There's alerts from all over the place saying that systems are not pingable, and it seems like they're going away and coming back, going away, coming back, and so my first thought was, okay, the monitoring system is clearly having, having a fit, so let's get on VPN, let's connect up to it, let's take a look at that uh, that monitoring system. And I log in the monitoring system, I RDP into it, and here I am, it seems to be fine. I choose one of the machines that it says I can't talk to. 
and I can't ping it. That's that means that the monitor system's not malfunctioning. So that's that's worse. It'd have been better if it was, but and so I then I open up this the company I still I work for still uses uh, VMware ESXi and vCenter. So I pop open vCenter, and what I see is. Uh, the strangest thing I've seen in my entire professional life. So I look at, there's a cluster of 15 hosts in this, this big cluster, right? And they're big, powerful Xeon systems with many physical cores, many gigabytes of RAM each, like uh, hundreds of gigs and like 60 cores or something like that. Some, just some enormous amount of, of processing on it. And all of the uh, hosts in the cluster have red CPU usage overages happening on them. And I'm like, whew, that's uh, I've never, never seen that in my entire time. So I start clicking through these hosts and they're literally, you go to their, their overview and they're literally just 100% CPU usage. And on a virtual machine or on a virtual host running lots of virtual machines, you can see that occasion. There'll be a time when there's contention, it'll go up, but Typically, it's only a few of the cores, not the entire box being a solid line of, of, oh my God. Start clicking through the other hosts, they're all the same, like, what is going on? I've never seen anything like this. So I start clicking on the virtual machines that are inside of each one of these hosts, and they are blue screened. So, okay, and immediately that makes sense. So in Windows, when a computer blue screens, it uses 100% of the CPU that's assigned to it. Just does, thanks Microsoft. And so when that happens, if you have a big VM with, you know, 30, 40, 60 cores, if it's a SQL server, it can use up 100% of, you know, of 64 or whatever uh, vCPUs on a host. And that's, that makes sense. But the problem is I'm watching these VMs and I watch them do their memory dumps and then they reboot because that's what you're, you do with the Windows servers, the things crash, it's Windows, right? So when it crashes, you expect to do its memory dump and you should come back up and then business as usual will just figure out what made it crash. Except I watch it come up and then I watch it immediately blue screen again. And now I'm watching all these machines. I click through the hundreds of Windows servers that are in this cluster and they're all just rebooting. And it's, there's a moment in your life when you work in this industry and you know I, I work in security these days more than I work in infrastructure where you look at something and you go, is this it? Is this really the ransomware event that, that we all are terrified it's gonna happen? And I'm looking at vSAN, because this is a this is a HCI cluster, and vSAN is like, I'm happy. The uh, ESXi hosts are like, I'm fine. I can navigate to those clusters, everything looks okay. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And at this point now, roughly, I'm gonna say maybe, maybe roughly 10 minutes has, has elapsed. And at this point, all of the organizations operations have come to a halt. And so that means now we're getting more people pinging into Microsoft Teams, like what's going on, what's going on? I'm like, okay, it's time to get into a war room and let's let's get everybody on board, let's bring everybody up to speed, what's going on? So we do, and we're in this meeting and we have representation from the help desk, they got me from security infrastructure, another guy from infrastructure, we've got management, we got like lots of layers of management because holy cow. And uh, we have one of the help desk guys in there and he goes, oh, I just, got a, I just got a notification from someone out on the shop floor that two of the machines in their department just spontaneously blue screen. I'm like, again, that moment I'm like, it's ransomware and it's spreading. I'm seeing it happen, it's happening in real time. It's just like, you know, just like the worst case scenario, it, it hit my infrastructure and now it's moving out into the, to the systems on the floor. And then, uh, we're in a meeting with like, I don't know, man, there's like, there's like probably seven, 10 people in this. And we're watching people who are remote disappear from camera. They just freeze. And then they get on their, you know, their mobile phones on teams are like, I just blue screened. And that was the moment, the realization that it was like, this can't be ransomware because it, Good ransomware could absolutely spread itself across the network, guys. 100%, right? If, it, if they're doing what they're, they're doing, they know what they're doing. But for it would have to be really good ransomware to somehow just magically jump across to someone who may or may not be connected to the corporate VPN and make their system crash. So 
my brain immediately went to what do these all share in common? And the only thing that they share in common was the EDR software, the Fal uh, CrowdStrike Falcon. So from that point, it was get on the internet, go look at Reddit, go look at X, go find somewhere somebody's talking about it. And as fast as the internet is in terms of getting information, there's still this huge lag, right? You can't just go to Google the instant something happens and be like, what is happening? And you know, you're gonna get a whole bunch of junk, but not necessarily the information that you want in real time. So places like Reddit and the Sys, you know, the sysadmins forum, subreddit, excuse me, or Twitter is a good place because people are typically sounding off really quick because they're upset. And almost immediately we find that there are other people who are like, my entire company just went blue screened. And you know, the thing that they share in comments, oh, I think it's, I think it's CrowdStrike. Just as, a, as an aside, earlier yesterday at like 5 p.m. Pacific time, somewhere around there, Microsoft Azure had a storage failure event of some sort that took down all the 365 services, M365 services. And that happened. Uh, they got a fix, but that was a big deal. That that delayed airplanes taking off. It was in the news. It was like anytime Azure goes offline, people are like, oh God, right? Because those cloud services are heavily used. And so there was this conflation of like, is this more Microsoft stuff? Is this related to, are they are they in trouble together? And, you know, it was it was pretty clear at that point that it was, was, was just CrowdStrike Falcon. And people started to say, hey, I found a way to fix it by wholesale deleting a folder. And at that point, you just had a realization when you started to watch the world around you, like how vulnerable we are, that the whole world that's tied into CrowdStrike, and there's a lot of governments, hospitals, both hospitals out here in Portland were affected. Like hospitals, uh, I saw that like the airports are were down um, and airlines were, were canceling flights because they don't have the ability to book and they don't have the ability to, to do everything. Like it's a big deal because CrowdStrike is a big deal and CrowdStrike Falcon is the best that you can get. So that's the story, just just crazy. And you can just imagine the emotional roller coaster of being like, that's it. Every, every IT person, every single IT person in the world who works in this role and has to contend with the possibility of, of a cybersecurity attack or ransomware or something like that, always gets this feeling like, that's it, this is the one. Well, it's time to become a beat farmer. I'm out, good luck guys, right? Uh, that wasn't the case this time, thankfully, but, so there's a bit of relief after the, the roller coaster of like, just the, just crazy. So now let's talk about recovery. And this is recovery for me in my organization and that is the directions that came from CrowdStrike was specifically to, if you can, on the machines that you have direct console access to, and this would be like desktops, laptops, server virtual machines, physical machines, get into safe mode and delete a specific file and then the Windows system 32 backslash uh, drivers backslash CrowdStrike, and then it's like C-50291, uh, then a whole bunch of stuff, but it was a really small file. Delete that file, reboot. That's fine, except because you have to reboot the machine and mash the F8 key on a computer, every single virtual machine that runs Windows in the organization that was affected had to be manually touched. There was no way to script this or make it, you know, programmatically send this out, and that was a really, really, really big thing because it's just that humans tapping on keyboards like it's 1997 again and we're just doing one after another. And so it took a very, very long time. The worst off people in this case were the people who had, and we had some machines like virtual machines in Azure. Those VMs in Azure don't have a console. So you can't go to the console and say reset and then mash the F8 key until you can get the, the safe mode prompt to start with networking. Those machines had to be shut down. A new virtual machine had to be created. You had to mount the system disk from the affected virtual machine to the new virtual machine, delete the file, unmount it, and then start that virtual machine. So even a more laborious process, if you think of some companies that have, have moved everything from on-premise into, into Azure, into fat VMs, are now having to go through this a very hands-on process. And I tell you what, it's, I'm filming this at like 1.14 um, the next day. 
I, there are people out there still who are still awake doing the stuff who didn't get any sleep. So, you know, pour one out for those guys. That was basically it. Like there's, you know, I don't really know what else to say versus, or except for the fact that really just the most unprecedented event to happen in my entire professional career. And I do remember 15 years ago, there was a Symantec update before Symantec was bought by Evil Broadcom that, that deleted a, or quarantined a Windows uh, system file that caused problems. But back then, 15 years ago, the world wasn't so big, so spread out. It didn't have CrowdStrike everywhere and it didn't happen instantaneously across everything. So anyway, for those of you out there who are still digging out and recovering, I feel you, I'm with you. I sure hope you get sleep soon. For those of you who have just been sitting back with your your box of popcorn, just like watching the disaster, um, I hope this was entertaining. Let me know in the comments if you guys like it. If you don't like it, if you say, don't ever do this again, whatever. Anyway, I hope to see you guys soon after a good long sleep. Thanks for watching.